Hey everybody, hope you're all doing good. It is Tuesday morning and I am getting ready to start on a little bit of what is like supposed to be a warranty repair. This was originally sent here for backlight failure. It is an iPhone 6S Plus and it actually had no backlight whatsoever. And I fixed it. I'm, I believe I also put a screen in it. I'm getting ready to look and make sure. So when this originally came in, the guy said, I think I have a backlight issue. Um, I backed up, I backed it up and restored it, replaced the screen. And after I hooked up the new screen and the logic board, I smell some burning. And anyways, he wound up with an iPhone 6S Plus that had no backlight. And this came in and I repaired it. And I'm gonna read to you what the actual repair entailed here. Repair double backlight failure, replace FL4211, FL4291, clean insulate repair test and test, and then I wrote pass. So what this means is that I replaced the two backlight filters and then I covered them with green UV mask and, and cured it. And then um, also replaced screen assembly to solve home button not working. This is somebody who I gave a new, uh, I basically gave a screen assembly to in order to fix the issue with his home button not working. A uh, home button is also damaged and has been replaced. So this is an iPhone 6, uh, 6S Plus that went back without working Touch ID. And the last thing I wrote was fully reassemble and test mics, speakers, cameras, and sensors all pass except for Touch ID. So I fixed everything except for the home button Touch ID. Okay, no fingerprint scanner. Here is where we are at today. And I... I need to be doing things that make money today, but I really feel bad. You know, this is a guy who's paid for a repair and here is why it is back. Hi, Jason. Since I received the phone back from you, I turned it off and I waited until December to give it to my daughter for Christmas. Um, that was her upgrade from an old iPhone 6. Everything worked good until last Sunday. The phone turned black and was not able to be turned back on. When the phone cools down, we was able to turn it back on again, but after a couple of hours, the phone turned black again. I don't know what is wrong with it, but she was able to use it for a couple of weeks. Um, if there's anything you can do for me to check the phone to find out what the problem is, she was so happy, but now she has no phone at all because I sold her old phone. Uh, so this girl's like, you know, she's really upset about it. She had a new phone and, and now it's not working before. Basically, the phone was only working for two weeks and I know that you fixed it four months ago. I know that it sounds pretty crazy and I know that you don't have to believe me what I'm saying, but I know how it was. Yeah, okay. I mean, dude, I'm, I'm a really open-minded guy. I mean, really. Please, Jason, let me know if you can do something for me because she is devastated by this and she promised me that she didn't drop it and I believe her. Marcel? I'm gonna do this one on video, um, unless I reach a point where it's just like gonna be a really, really long, nasty repair. But I would like to show you and also everybody else watching this channel what this issue is gonna be because this originally came in for blown backlight filters with a screen, a torn cable on the screen, and this seems considerably different. So <laughs> let's have a look at this phone. I have not pulled it out of the package. I mean, I'm totally, absolutely, absolutely clueless as to what I'm going to be getting in here. I know that I am expecting to see a phone that has had backlight filters replaced and screen replaced. Now, since I'm a fool and I broke my favorite Penelope driver, I'm going to be using one of these new drivers. One thing that I don't like about these drivers, ooh, that's nice and magnetic, is that they're not color coded. I've began using the color coded drivers as really, really um, a, a means of being really quick at picking the correct driver. Now, since this is an iPhone 6S Plus, there's a significant chance that I also installed a new gasket. I hope I didn't. Feels like I did not. I always install them on iPhone 10 and above, unless it's got like a cracked back. Did you see me getting ready to open that like an iPhone 7? I hope I didn't tear his home flex. Okay, two things are gonna happen here. We are going to figure out what exactly happened to this phone. And then we are also going to show everybody what my repair looked like whenever nobody was looking. Now I will say it does look like we have a slight bend here across NAND, but I'm not for certain about that. So let's go ahead. I mean, it could just be my eyeballs screwing with me. You know, I'm always on a serious lookout for what all could be wrong. I mean, um, chances are, I mean, this could be my screen assembly. Is this mine? It looks like one that I installed. It could be the screen assembly that I installed. It could be drawing too much power from the backlight circuit and causing this thing to get really, really, really hot. 
Um, that would be something I would admit fault for because you know I installed a faulty screen. Um, it could be that I've got a shorted cap somewhere where I've done you know done some rework. I noticed that on this particular phone, it looks like the shield has been removed. See how it's got the the uh, the black sticker on there is kind of funky. So I wonder why I removed the shield if it was only blown backlight filters. Um, it seems like I sort of went around in circles with this one a little bit. So there, I mean, gosh, there could be any number of things wrong here. And I'm not just going to be like, no, it's not my fault. This could be my fault. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a jerk. Like this could be my fault. So let's, uh, let's see if this is my fault. I'm going to take these brackets off of here. And let us, with the phone sitting exactly like it is, we're going to hook it up to the power supply and turn it on. So there we've got the power supply on the screen. We have set this to 4.2 volts. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to hook it up right here. Well, that one just don't like to hang on too much anymore, does it? That's all right. We'll hold it there. And I'm going to switch the power supply on and we get a 10 milliamp load. That is actually small enough load that it could be coming through my uh, DC power squid. Now we're going to press the button to boot. And one, two, three, boot. 900 milliamps. 100 and something milliamps. We have full backlight. 200 milliamps. Da, da, da. 600 milli big ones. We're going to let this thing come all the way up and boot. Switch it over to me here while this boots for a second. And now we are up to a passcode screen. Now the very next thing that I'm going to do, eh, there's nothing too revealing on that screen. We can just leave it. So we're up to a passcode screen. We've got Verizon LTE. I'm not sure if it's actually got service or not. And we're sitting here drawing 500 milliamps, 200. The phone is peacefully going to sleep. I was able to cool off. Do you guys think this thing's having like an intermittent failing Wi-Fi failure? I think almost everybody by now has gotten a, a flavor in their mouth for iPhone 6S and 6S Plus with failing Wi-Fi ICs. It's, it's really out of control. Look at this thing drop out to 20 milliamps of idle current. Can you, yeah, I still got the current on the screen. 200 milliamps, 800, 700, 800. Let's see if it's going to go to sleep and idle. Oh man, the screen is just flooding with notifications. Hell no, it's not going to idle. Let me get the SIM card out of it. I think I can do that while holding this power supply connector on here. Yeah, this thing is just like, I've got notifications scrolling like nobody's business. Like none of your business. <laughs> so there we go. Oh, they are just scrolling, man. This thing is scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. So now I've popped the SIM card out of it. And we're going to wait and see if this thing will sleep with some sleeping current. So it's obviously working for a phone. It's got Verizon service, tons of messages coming in. I just want to see if you sleep, and then we're going to run you off of something that's not my power supply. 200. It's actually not completely slept yet. I've seen it drop down to like 20 milliamps for a minute. There. That's good sleeping current. You know, 20 milliamps. It's like it's not using any power at all. I mean, this thing's... The phone's working terrific, right? Okay. Certainly nothing that would cause it to get hot. Let's go ahead and hook up his battery. There we go. And now I want to see what our charging current is. We're going to hook this up to a charger. And we've got a battery. It's hard to see because it's faint, but it's on there. We've got a battery charging icon. And this thing is sitting here drawing 900 milliamps of charging current. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Let's let this thing charge up and turn on on its own free will. I'm going to try to track down a passcode. I know I don't have one here right this second. I just might have a passcode for this phone. Where was the original ticket? Because I'm sure whenever I needed to troubleshoot that home button, I told him I needed a passcode, right? Ah, we actually did charge him for the screen assembly. 
wasn't a freebie. Okay, this thing is booting up. It does not look like I have a passcode, at least not one that was sent with the phone this time. Let me check a couple other notes here. Let's just see if this thing has a passcode hiding around anywhere. But as it looks, I mean, I'm not, I'm not having any trouble. You know, the battery is now showing 1%. Um, this, this thing is charging a battery. And, uh, hmm. Okay, so we're up and running. We verified that it sleeps. We know it gets cell phone service. We know that I don't have a passcode. See, we got, see, we've got 1% battery. This thing is charging at one amp. The phone works flawlessly. So, um, you know, there are, have been many times whenever I've started repair videos such as this one, and this is how it ends up. And guys, you know, more often than not, I am going to start posting these experiences, if not for this guy to see what just happened with his phone, but for everybody to kind of follow along with me and get a general sense of uh, what it is that I go through. So guys, if you like my videos, I ask that you um, please join as a member through YouTube or subscribe to my Patreon. I have to be 100% honest. There is a little part of me that worries that I may not be able to continue this. And I really just, uh, I love what I do and I want to keep doing it. So guys, I really thank you for watching and um, I'll see you soon. Have a good day. You know what? Just one, just one other thing. Okay, one other thing. I said that I would show you guys what my work looked like. So let's look and see what I did to this phone. Let's go ahead and finish removing the screen assembly. We will disconnect the battery. Let's just look and see what Jason did to this phone. Jason, like I'm talking in third person now. I'm losing my mind. Right, so here we are looking under the microscope. And here you can see where I have replaced this backlight filter back here and insulated it. And then over here on this side, I replaced this backlight filter here, insulated it. And then I replaced the screen. That's, that's what was done with this phone. But now it has some weird intermittent problem. And I'm betting this winds up being Wi-Fi. The description the customer has of getting hot and having to cool down, man, those Wi-Fi ICs get hot.